Welcome to Trade Pro. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to best overcome the glaring downfalls of most trading scripts, indicators, and strategies. So I'll talk about what are those glaring downfalls and then kind of get into how I recommend that you actually use a script or indicator to your advantage in combination with certain additional factors. I'm also gonna talk about how I'm going to start a small account challenge and demonstrate what I'm actually going to discuss in this video and also give a little life update. So I'm actually gonna go in reverse order and talk a little bit about my life update because it will lead into the other things. Now, as a lot of people know on the channel, I'm in Costa Rica right now, um, but tomorrow morning, first thing in the morning, I'm going to be flying out to Thailand. It's gonna be 38 hours of flights and layovers, but the reason I'm telling you is because when I arrive in Thailand, I'm going to have a 15-day quarantine where I cannot leave my hotel room. You know what that means? I'm gonna have a lot of free time to spend on the charts. So I figured it would be a perfect occasion for me to do some sort of small account challenge and pump out some testing videos, get some content going on the channel because um, the last month, I just haven't really been getting enough content out to you guys. So just wanna make up for that. Um, you know, the, one of the issues is that I don't have my proper computer set up. So, you know, I'm used to having um, all the multiple big monitors and a really fast, nice uh, PC, but I've been using just my little laptop. So it's a little bit less efficient and not as easy to, for me to balance my personal trading with the channel content and the Patreon questions and Discord questions and stuff, um, all from my laptop with just one small screen. So I apologize for that, but let's get into the video here and talk about these topics. So what are the typical downfalls of most scripts, indicators, and strategies? Well, the main thing is that they just simply have an extremely hard time holding up consistently across multiple pairs, markets, and timeframes. You can end up fitting it to a certain pair and time frame with great results, but then when you test it on another pair, market, or time frame, those results just aren't nearly as good. So let's talk about what can you do to overcome this issue. What are some additional factors that you can add in on top of your indicators or your scripts that is gonna make your results much more consistent? Well, with any strategy, it's going to be extremely difficult to keep it 100% objective and keep its ability to be accurately coded into an indicator or script while still having it produce great results across many timeframes and pairs. It's going to be extremely helpful to add in additional outside analysis in order to get something that's really noteworthy that will work across multiple pairs and sets of price data and or timeframes. Quickly, while I am on this topic, I do need to mention overfitting. And it's a really common thing when talking about testing a strategy on historical data. Now, the best way to overcome overfitting is to test on sufficient amount of price data or test the strategy enough times for enough trades. So 100 trades is not nearly enough to keep the strategy from being overfit to a specific sample size of price data. So the more the better, the more that you have tested, the lower the chances that your strategy has been overfit to a specific sample size of price data. But I just wanted to say that that is not the main point of this video, but I can't do this video without mentioning overfitting at some point and how to avoid, or the number one way to avoid overfitting. Um, so on to the rest of the video now. So I will just list off some additional factors you can consider adding in to improve results and make a script or indicator more versatile. I'm talking about things like hidden divergence, regular divergence, trend lines, support and resistance, Fibonacci retracements, multi-time frame analysis, patterns, or whatever your thing is that you want to add in to improve your results. 
One thing that is a must with these additional factors is that you are able to use them in a consistent rules-based fashion as to keep the balance between a 100% objective codable trading system and something that still produces great results across multiple timeframes and markets. So now uh, specifically for people who are using trading scripts like the ones that are available on the Patreon page, I want to make sure that they are used as intended. And that is as a luxury tool that gives you alerts to potential opportunities in the market and allows for efficient backtesting. So I don't want people using them as a sort of standalone magic pill to trading profitably because you know that's not what they are. And um, I have seen some people who maybe believe, seem to have believed that that's how they were presented, but I did make sure in both the Ichimoku script video and in the uh, most recent script video to you know, say straight out that, hey, this is just a luxury item and it's not going to help your um, trading profitability very much. It is only a tool that can be used um, in you know, it's a luxury item. It's, it's not necessary. And, you know, I made this very clear in the videos and I think um, some people didn't hear me out on that um, so that they were thinking that it would be some, you know, magic thing. And that's not the intent at all. So that's what I'm, that's why I wanted to say this in the video here um, and just reiterate it for the third time. Um, and also give some, you know, more insight onto how I want people to use it. Um, like I did in the Ichimoku video where I, I, Ichimoku script video, where I did talk about the intended use for it um, to be used in conjunction with um, additional factors in the market. So um, I think that is pretty much it um, for talking points, but I want to um, just kind of go over what I am actually talking about here with additional factors. So we can just go through some examples here on the chart where the script gives a signal and then we can look for additional factors that may signal us to a more high probability entry, okay? All right, so time to show actual examples of using additional criteria to greatly improve your results. So what I've done is find the worst period of losers that I could find. And I'm on the one hour time frame of Euro against the US dollar. And of course, I am going to be picking hidden divergence because that is what I use. That's my thing. So let's go over each one of these losses and see if we can save ourselves by adding in the criteria for needing hidden divergence before we get our entry signal. So on this one, we're gonna be looking down here at this pullback and the RSI, and we're gonna be comparing it to the pullback here before the long signal that we get up here. Was there hidden divergence in play? Well, there wasn't, so we would not be allowed to take this long signal. So now let's look over here, we get a short signal. And do we have hidden bearish divergence if we're comparing the pullbacks here to this pullback, which would, you know, potentially we'd be looking for it to continue downwards if we get a short signal. But did we have hidden divergence before we got this short signal? So we'd be looking to this candle right here. And where's the RSI? And we're gonna compare the RSI high here to the pullback here or over here. And we do not get hidden bearish divergence. So we would not be allowed to enter that short, which obviously was a good thing. Now let's take a look at this long position here. So obviously this is all on a range, which is why all of these are losses. And we can see how hidden divergence criteria has allowed us to um, mitigate two losses. So let's take a look at this one. And we have our low right here before the entry signal. And if we're looking at the previous low down here, you know, we definitely don't get any hidden bullish divergence. So we'd definitely not be interested in longing right over here, which was a good thing. So we wouldn't be able to, we would not be allowed to take that one. Let's, let's check out this one here. So we get the short all the way down here and we definitely do not have any hidden bearish divergence down here. RSI has not come up. 
um, nearly high enough. And now let's take a look over here. So for this long, we get this is the low of the pullback here. And if we're going to be looking for a pullback of a certain size to this one, we could certainly take this one. Because if we're looking at this right here and comparing it to the RSI right here on this pullback, we could certainly be entering on this long position just based on the hidden bullish divergence compared to this low right here. Now, if you're comparing it to the low all the way down here, then we are certainly not getting hidden bullish divergence, but typically um, with pullbacks of a small size like this, you wanna compare it to a pretty similar pullback and not to something like this pullback all the way down to this huge pullback. So you don't compare the hidden divergence from this pullback to up here, you're gonna be comparing it to one of a more similar size. So that is a loss, but we've saved a few winners, um, four winners to be exact. So in a range, you can make sure that you have clear hidden divergence if you want to actually accept an entry from the script. And you know, this is just a quick example of how you might be able to implement something um, to minimize losses. And of course I found the greatest losing period that I could with the script um, in order to demonstrate this. But um, yeah, that's it. That's for it for the video. Um, you can try tons of different things. Uh, it doesn't have to, oh, there's a train going by. My um, Airbnb is on the seventh floor uh, of a very large building and there's a train that passes by every few hours directly below the building and it loves to honk its horn at 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's nice. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. You know, utilize different tactics, whatever your thing is. It doesn't have to be hidden divergence, you know. I meant, as I mentioned earlier, a big list of things that you could potentially use, um, but yeah. Hopefully this was helpful for anyone out there who was confused or wondering and have a fantastic day guys. Thanks for watching.